Hello, everybody out there. Welcome to another music class. Steven, No Nothing Music, 30 videos in 30 days, giving you the basics on music. I was watching one of these videos on my phone last night, and I realized that the, the board was a little hard to see when you're watching on your phone or whatever. Maybe it's just because, it, you know, it's on a phone. It's a small picture, but I know some people watch on a computer, but I want to get this nice and close, so we're a little bit uh, zoomed in today. So today, it, here is another class on rhythm. We did, we did Rhythm 101, which is basically this chart over here. We, we have our note values and our note names. And last time we did a video on rhythm, we talked about subdivisions, counting out loud, and beat placement, which is the idea of what beats do things fall on in our counting scheme. Today, we're going um, to finish it off with three different symbols that are not going to show you everything you ever need to know about rhythm, but the notes, note values plus these three symbols called a dot, a tie, and a triplet, are gonna, they're going to take care of the vast majority of ever, any rhythm you're ever going to need to play or count out in you know, normal, easy enough music, pop, rock, you know, a lot of classical, things like that. So let's get into it. This video is probably going to be a little bit shorter than the other ones. So we just got to cover these three, uh, these three symbols right here. So if you have our duration over here, I, I spoke about this a little bit in our first rhythm class, um, that sometimes they will include a dotted half note or a dotted quarter note inside of your normal rhythms. Now, they are normal in that you're going to see the dotted quarter notes and half notes a lot. But what I prefer to do in my classes is if the person is competent enough at math, or AKA someone probably seven years, eight years and up, we'll just cover what a dot does to a note so you can understand the broader concept. So I said in my uh, last rhythm video that usually teachers will just show you that a dotted half note is worth three. Now they're right about that, but they usually won't explain what a dot does. Now here's what a dot does. It takes the duration of the note or the notes val the rhythm's value and multiplies it by one and a half or 1.5. So for instance, you have your half note and you have another way of saying this, and this is the way I present it to uh, kids that don't really understand decimals, I guess, or, or how to like multiply or add fractions. They do know a little bit about it. So while all I say is it takes half of that note's value and adds it to that note. In other words, multiplying it by 1.5. Okay, so let's let's test it. You got a dot you got a half note that's worth 2. If you put a dot on it, it multiplies it by 1.5. What is half of 2? It's 1. What's 2 plus 1? It's 3. So you could have a dotted whole note and that would be worth 6 because half of 4 is 2, 4 plus 2 is 6. And if you see our little examples over here, we have this. They have a, a half note worth two, dotted half note worth three, and then a, a, a quarter note is worth one, and what's half of, a, uh, of one? It's one half. So one plus one half is one and a half. Therefore, a dotted quarter note is worth one and a half beats. Now the same, I don't have these, uh, I don't have these examples listed, but you could do the same thing over here. If you were saying like an eighth note, it's worth half a beat. What's half of half a beat. Okay. It's a quarter of a beat. What's one half plus one quarter. It's three quarters. Okay. So a dotted eighth note is worth three quarters of a beat. Same thing over here. What is a, a, a 16th note worth? 16th note is worth one quarter. What is half of a quarter? It's one eighth. What is a dotted 16th note worth? It's worth three eighths of a beat. And we'll probably do um, a class on, you know, once we start to read and clap out rhythms with 16th notes, I mean, you're gonna have to just count your 16th notes and stuff like that. But we'll get into that another time. We're just trying to show you today what a dot does to a note. And just a quick thing, I mean, both a dot, and this is a good transition between dots and ties. Dots and ties, are two different ways of expressing that you want to ho want to hold a note longer than the normal version of it. So you know you have a quarter note, and then now the only thing that's different, well, not the only thing. There's a few things that are different. A dot is a dot is a dot. It mu always multiplies it by 1.5, so extends it by half the length of its own value. Okay, but what a tie does is it ties different rhythms together. So if you see this little uh, curved line right here, that is called a tie. Now, one thing that's very important that I forgot to put on the board, um, and 
you know, a lot of the reason, a lot of things that I bring up in class, or I guess some of the things that I'm going to bring up sometimes is how I would have done it differently had I invented the entire musical, you know, music system myself. If I would have just like, if I could do the whole thing, start a system from scratch, I would make, well, there's a thing called a slur. And a, what a slur does is it, 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 uh, it marks something legato. You're supposed to play it smoother than you normally would. Legato and tie look almost identical. And the way to tell the difference, and you know, this can trip some kids up, that ties have to be connecting the same pitch of note. A C and a C can be tied together. A C and a D cannot be tied together because what it's trying to show you is that you're holding a single note for the length of both notes or three or four or a million notes that are tied together. Okay, so you have a C. So, you know, just to backtrack a second, what a tie, the way I usually present what a tie is to my younger students is it's like a plus sign. Okay, that's really what it means. It adds the two rhythms together and you hold for the length of the notes that are tied. It's usually going to be two or three notes, but you can have a tie that like rings out basically to infinity. So it's like a plus sign. So you say you have a quarter note, and then it's tied to a half note. You will hold that note for three beats. The way that I know that is a quarter note is one, a half note is two. So if there's a quarter note tied to a half note, you hold it for a total of three beats. Now, that doesn't always mean that you're going to say one, two, three while you hold it because you can tie across bar lines. So if it's three beats, it could be four, one, two, or three, four, one. But the point is, is that that you have your 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 note that it starts on, and then you have the note it's tied to. You only play the note once right here. So you have a C, and you hit it, and you hold it till the end of the rhythm that it's tied to. And you know th there are uh, you know we I did a, a class yesterday on what books you you should have for uh, for your class. There is one. Um, there is one book that I will show you guys on air sometime that really helped me out. I think it's called the Encyclopedia of Reading Rhythms. And I sat down with my guitar teacher and we clapped out uh, these rhythms without an instrument in our hand for like a month, basically a month or two. And really, and really, um, grew me accustomed to seeing and reading rhythms and just making them on a, on percussion or clapping and trans once you have that down you translate translating those rhythms to an instrument is not so difficult so that's a tie there's a dot multiplies it by 1.5 it lengthens it lengthens it and a tie lengthens for the length of however many notes are tied together it could be a bunch of beats but usually what you'll experience, it's going to be either two, between two and four notes tied together. And it's a simple math equation where you're adding them together. Now, the final one that we'll cover today, and this, this might warrant a standalone video, but it's called a triplet. Now, here's one thing um, that a lot of music teachers, in my opinion, get wrong. What they'll tell you is it's one beat split three ways. And just like the dotted half note, they're not wrong about that. It is one beat split three ways. It, you can take a quarter note and split it three ways. And what that's called is an eighth note triplet. Okay, if you see over here, you're at your quarter note level. You split it three ways. So in the space of the from the one to the one, two, da 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 da. Okay, that is a valid triplet, but there are other triplets as well. So here's what a triplet is. It's any static note that is split three ways. You can split an eighth note three ways to 16th note triplets. You could split a 16th note three ways to 32nd note triplets. You could split a half note three ways to quarter note triplets. You can split a whole note three ways to half note triplets. So the way it works is you're splitting this level into three of that level. Whatever is the slower level of a rhythm, you split it three ways into the next fastest rhythmic level. So that's what a trip a triplet is. I'm not going to give you guys a bunch of examples of what triplets sound like. I mean, I kind of already just gave you one. So if you're like, watch this, you did one, two, da 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 da. But you could also, if you're going, if you're splitting your eighth note, one and two and da 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 and da da two da da ba da da ba. That's what that sounds like. Very common in music. But what is going to warrant a standalone video is feeling 
a stat the two static notes against the three tri- uh, three uh the, against the trip feeling two against three is how experienced musicians will um will know what i'm talking about there and I will admit that feeling a odd number against an even number is one of my weakest suits as a musician. I still do it. I still I play it all the time. But sometimes when I when I slow it down and break it down, I don't have as much skill at it as a lot of these like Latin musicians who are they're they're feeling polyrhythms all the time. That's many rhythms. Again, I never know who's watching these videos or something like that, but we'll do a couple videos on polyrhythms, on syncopation, on accents, and things like that. There, there will be more rhythmic, more rhythm videos, but this one here today is basically just to, to round out the vast majority of the symbols that you're ever going to see in rhythm. We have our note values, okay? And they're going to be counted a certain way. That's in our rhythm two video. You're going to count these one, two, three, four quarter notes. One and two and three and four and eighth notes, sixteenth notes are one e and a two e and a three and so on. Dots multiply the value or the duration of a note by one point five. Okay, we did an explanation on that earlier. Ties are like a plus sign. It's going to add the rhythms that that are tied, and you're going to hold it for the length of all the rhythms that are tied. And finally, we have what's called a triplet. And what a triplet does is it's, it splits a static note into three. It takes up the and it takes up the space of that static note. There's also quintuplets, sextuplets. There's all kind you can split into seven. That's for a later video. Um, but again, the, you're not going to see that much more than this inside of the vast majority of pop, rock music, church music, um, even a lot of classical and a lot of jazz, you won't get too much further than this. As you get into intermediate classical and intermediate jazz, you certainly will. Um, and, you know, more video videos will come on that. But, you know, one of the reasons I'm doing this 30 videos in 30 days is I think that I can, ex- the way I teach, and, and if you ask someone who's taken lessons with me, with me before, I don't cover a lot of different stuff. What I do is capitalize on your weakness and the importance of, of a very small bit of stuff. It's, it's going to be four or five practice habits, how to get really good at your general rhythms and remain disciplined through the process so you can learn songs exponentially. So you can learn 10 songs, and you can learn 10 songs by only practicing one of them. It, you know, these riv- rhythms are going to come up again and again and again in your practicing process. So I, it's, I don't know what the right phrase for it is, blue-collar, layman, uh, fundamental foundational music that's this is my bread and butter and that's this is what we're going to be teaching on is that there's not going to be a million things that come up over and over it's going to be about 10 different things that you have to be super solid on that you have to know like the back of your hand so that's the video right there if you guys want to um if you guys want to hit the like button hit the share button comment down below give me an idea of what uh what i should cover next we're doing 30 videos in 30 days i believe this is video number nine so we're going to keep pumping them out we got lead what is a lead sheet coming we have practice habits coming all kinds of stuff so hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you next time